Right, um, this is just a quick tutorial on how to create an 8-ball using Inkscape. We're going to have a look at um, using some of the path tools and also uh, how we can play with some of the um, stroke uh, uh, tools and, and effects um, on one of the particular icons on, this, on, on, on the interface uh, to make things look really quite cartoony and, and well, just a little bit cool. Right, so... Um, as usual, if I'm going to use Inkscape and I want to get everything neat and tidy, I'm going to go to View at the top and I'm going to hit Grid. Um, something you should really get used to doing, um, as it will not only make snap everything into place so that everything is in line, um, but it also allows you to figure out exactly how big things are. Now that's 680 by 680. Now I know that if I was to, even with the padlock off, that's 540 by 560 if I was to pull that up one I now know that that's 580 pull that across 600 and you gain the gauge uh, for how big things are okay so I'm just going to delete that now if I'm going to make a, a, an 8 ball I want a perfect circle so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to padlock the scale so nothing gets particularly warped um, and I'm just going to pull that down now it looks like a perfect circle, in actual fact it is, so it's 480 by 480, we'll, we'll, we'll go with that. And what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to select the uh, circle, I'm going to right click, duplicate, pull it to the side, and I'm just going to make a smaller version, because that's where the 8 is going to sit on the uh, on the actual 8 uh, uh, ball. I'm going to pull that across, now naturally because it's black on black you can't see it, so I'm just going to make it white to give me an idea of what the 8 ball is going to look like. Um, and I can see that that circle is fairly perfectly positioned. Um, I'm just going to go path. Uh, sorry, I'm going to select both um, by just clicking and dragging over both of the shapes. And then I'm going to go to path at the top here and difference. Now what that will have done is actually cut out um, the white circle from the black background. So I've got the start of an eight ball. Um, what I'm now going to do is I'm just going to put an 8 in it. Um, it's uh, 12 pixels at the moment in height, so I'm just going to whack that right up to 144 because the 8 ball is quite big. And I'm just going to press the letter 8, uh, the number 8, sorry. Um, I'm going to pull that up and place that into the into the 8 ball. Um, I'm going to use the arrow keys, so just top, 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 top for a bit and then right to give it a slight bit of perspective right so as a vector shape nice and cool and, and sort of a crisp um, is an eight ball but it's not particularly exciting so uh, what I'm now going to do is start having a look at some effects that I can put into it and one of them that I will do is uh, I'm actually going to duplicate the uh, main ball shape and I'm going to put a gloss over it a sort of similar gloss you might find on say an app now that's white at the moment, so obviously I can't see anything, so I'm just going to change that to grey so I can see the two shapes. I'm going to select both of them like I did before, go path, and rather than go to difference, I'm going to go to intersection. And what intersection will do is leave me with only the, the space where the two shapes overlap, which is perfect for what I'm looking for for my gloss. Uh, I'm going to hit white, and as you can see now, I've got the beginnings of, uh, of a kind of gloss uh, effect but it's a little bit too white and it's too close to the edges. So the first thing I want to do is bring it in a little bit. So I've, I'm going to make sure that I select the top white bit, go to path and inset. And that will gradually bring it in a bit. So I might need that a couple of times. Path, inset. Um, another shortcut actually is by hitting control and nine to bring it in or zero to bring it out. So as you can see, if I hit nine a couple of times, that's bringing it even closer into the ball and that's now got quite a nice little sort of shape to it and uh, it's set perfectly where I need it to be. Um, now to get the gloss effect I'm going to go down here and use the edit uh, the gradient tool. So the first thing I would do is I would make sure that the white shape is selected, go to the gradient tool, now click down above the shape, uh, the dotted line around the shape at this moment in time will show you that it's actually selected, click down and pull down. So if I pull down now, you can see I've put this kind of white shine through it. Um, I'm going to make it look a little bit more realistic in a second. Um, but as you can see there, I've got this kind of uh, gloss on it, which I think I'm fairly happy with. 
Right, so now I've got this kind of shine on the top of it, um, and I want to put a few more effects to it so it looks a little bit more kind of funky. Um, right, so first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to now explore this thing called the blur tool, which we actually find in the strokes um, uh, panel. So if I hit this paintbrush down here in the bottom right hand corner, I get this window pop up. So I'm just going to pull it across so we can see a little bit more um, of what's going on. And I'm also going to just drag the dialog box if I can, which I don't think I can actually. Um, I'm going to hit minus on the right hand side of the numbers key just to bring it out a little bit more. And I'm going to put a blur around the eight ball. And the way I do that is, as you can see here, I've got this opacity tool, which makes obviously look a little bit more ghost like. Um, but I'm going to keep that 100%. Actually, I might drop it a little bit to say 90. Okay, um, so it's a little bit more faded. And this blur tool is really funky as a tool. So if I hit that there, it now makes it look a little bit more spray painted. Um, I'm just going to get it to about two, 1.5, maybe a little bit more. And I've got that effect. And I'm going to do that to the same to the white uh, gloss because it looks a little bit unrealistic with it being too crisp on top. So I'm just going to nudge the button at the top here just to see what would look good. And I think. Maybe a little bit. I'm fairly happy with that. Maybe it could be blended just a little bit more. There you are. And obviously we've got this eight ball that's a little bit too um, one. It's a little bit too big as well. Um, is it again too crisp? So I'm just going to make it slightly less opaque, so it looks a little bit more kind of in tune with the rest of the ball. And then I'm going to hit blur again. Now. If I take the grid away and I go object group, put it all together, actually I don't want to do that, it's taking the blur away from the, um, it's taking the blur away from the 8 ball, so I'm just going to increase the 8 blur on that again, now if I go to select it, I might actually one thing maybe make it a little bit more 3D. So I'm going to go to filters, shadows, and drop shadow. Um, I think everything's fairly happy there. In terms of settings, I'm now going to go file, export bitmap. I'm going to find my desktop, and I'm just going to call it a ball. And what that will do is export it as a transparent PNG file. Um, I'm actually going to make it 300 dpi, because if I was ready to make it ready for print, I'm going to hit export. And that should be exporting to my desktop as we see. It's a fairly big document. There it is there. Now if I was to close that dialog box there, minimise that, bring up the 8 ball, in a preview, here it comes, and there is 300 dpi 8 ball with gloss.